If you've just enrolled with the CFA, your life is about to change. You'll learn so much about finance and investing. And if you successfully complete the charter, your job prospects and earning potential will skyrocket. However, a lot of hard work lies between now and the finish line. But don't worry, I passed all three levels first time, scoring in the 90th percentile at all applicable levels. And in this video, I'm going to make your life easier. Now, if you're still deciding whether to do the CFA, I recently did a comprehensive overview of the charter to help with your decision. If you're interested, links on screen, check that out. But if you're enrolled and ready to go, let's get you the charter. If you're new here, I'm Harris, an investment banker and CFA charter holder who studied at Imperial College London. Okay, in this video, I'm going to cover the optimal study pathway, recommended materials, creating a study plan, and mistakes to avoid. So let's start with the optimal study pathway. Now, the objective here is to map out the most efficient route through the charter, and I'll include alternatives should you fail, which hopefully doesn't happen, alongside my advice. Now, if you've just enrolled, I'm assuming you're not sitting level one in November 24, and instead are taking it in Feb 25. So with that in mind, here are the relevant exam windows. So for level one, there are four exams per year in Feb, May, August, and November. So the relevant exam windows are Feb 25, May 25, August 25, and November 25. For level two, there are three exams per year in May, August, and November. So the relevant exam windows are May 25, August 25, November 25, and May 26. And finally, for level three, there are two exams per year in Feb and August. So assuming you're sitting level one in Feb 25, the relevant exam windows are Feb 26, August 26, and Feb 27. Now, a couple of important details here. So if you do pass your exam, you can sit the next level in the next available exam window without a mandatory waiting period. But if you fail, you must wait at least six months before retaking the level. Personally, I think you need at least six months to study effectively for each level, even if you don't need to wait six months if you pass. I also recommend studying over winter as there's a lot less going on, so it's much easier to focus. Hence, Feb and May sittings are best. With that in mind, let's look at potential routes, assuming you start studying today in August 24 for level one in Feb 25. So let's start with the route, assuming you pass all three levels first time. So here, the fastest viable route is level one in Feb 25, then level two in August 25. You could sit in May 25, but it doesn't leave long enough to study. And then level three in Feb 26. Again, you could sit in August 25, but that doesn't leave long enough to study either. So in total, this would take one year and six months from August 25. Now that is the fastest viable route, but is not what I recommend based on what I just advised. So given I recommend at least six months of study per level and ideally studying over winter, here's the recommended route. So you take level one in Feb 25, then level two in November 25, leaving you a nice long window, and then level three in Feb 27. But that's over a year for the final level but you're going to want to break after smashing out level one and two in a short period of time. And again, the Feb 27 sitting is in winter. So again, you'll benefit from reduced distraction. And in total, this recommended route would take two years and six months, which is still under three years. Okay, now let's assume you fail level one once and then pass the other levels first time. So the fastest viable route and my recommended route is level one in Feb 25, which you fail. Then you retake level one in August 25 after the six month mandatory waiting period. Then you take level two in May 26 and then level three in Feb 27. And both those level two and level three sittings are after winter, which is ideal. You could sit level three in August 26, but again, it doesn't leave much time to study after your level two sitting, and it would be over summer, which everyone wants to enjoy. In total, this would take two years and six months from August 24, which is again, under three years. If you pass all three levels first time, you can do it in as little as a year and a half. There's very little rest between exams with this option and burnout is probable. My recommended route takes two and a half years, which allows some time to rest and study over winter, which is exactly what I did. Okay, let's move on to recommended materials. And the first thing to consider is study materials. Now, when you sign up for the exam via the CFA Institute, you will get access to the CFA learning ecosystem, which in theory has everything you need to pass the exam. However, there are no recorded lectures. So it's essentially an online textbook, which is pretty dense and difficult to get through and it can be painful. And this is one of the biggest challenges about the CFA because it's very difficult to know what's most testable and you can get lost in the detail. And this is where prep providers come in. So someone will teach you the curriculum via recorded or live lectures and hopefully make the learning experience more engaging and focus your attention on the most testable material. But this does come at an additional cost. So if you're strapped for cash, you can just use the learning ecosystem. But if you have the means and want to make your life easier, here are some options. So there are several prep providers on the market. I've included the most popular ones here. All prices are for 2025 online only self-study. If you're interested in live cohorts, check out the relevant providers website. Now I'm not going to go through each one individually, but here are some general thoughts. 
So as you can see, Fitch and Kaplan are the most expensive options and from my perspective are overpriced and don't provide the most engaging study experience. I've not used Wiley, which is now owned by UWorld, but it does have a decent reputation, so you could check that out. I personally use Mark Meldrum at level two and three, which I think is excellent and affordable, but their notes are not up to scratch. So if you do go for Mark Meldrum, I always recommend pairing them with IFT Wall's notes, which are superb. They're concise, well presented, focus on the most testable material and save you tons of time. Prices range from $119 to $229, depending on the level. IFT also do a high yield package, which offers review videos and condensed notes, which apply the Pareto principle and focus on the most testable material that almost always comes up in the exam. This is excellent for two things. So number one, reviews, given the size of the curriculum, it can be very difficult to trace through it and remind yourself what was in it. So the condensed notes are superb for this. And number two, they're great for covering a topic that you've not had the time to study properly. So for those of you who are cramming, these can be a lifesaver. Prices range from $155 to $230, depending on the level. Now, if you want to stick with a single prep provider, the IFT Plus package has everything you need, including video lectures, main lecture notes, and question bank. I used this at level one where I got a 90th percentile score. And finally, if you want a comprehensive study experience, go for the premium package where you'll get everything that's in the plus package alongside the high yield review videos and notes, Q&A with instructors, which is super helpful if you have questions or you're generally struggling, additional mock exams and pass protection, which means you only pay once until you pass. I've also secured you an exclusive 15% off all self-study IFT products for the next two weeks only. If you use my name, Harris, as a coupon at checkout, don't miss out. The relevant links are in the description. Now, another thing you'll need to master is the calculator, which is different to the one you used at school. The CFA exams are highly time pressured, so if you want to pass them, you must be able to use a calculator efficiently, but most people don't know where to start. So I've put together a completely free guide with everything you need to answer questions quickly and accurately, saving you time in the exam and increasing your chances of success. Check out the link in the description. As I said, it's completely free. One final thing, which isn't a material as such, but is equally important is a study community. The CFA journey can be a lonely one, especially if you go down the self-study route, which is more affordable and flexible since you don't have fixed lesson times, but it can be isolating. You need people to share the pain with and discuss questions with and so on. Now you can join online forums such as Reddit, but I'm going to offer you a better way to connect with fellow candidates and offer you an exclusive opportunity. There's a lot of information out there about the CFA and many prep providers which can teach you the content, but there's very little information out there on how to prepare yourself mentally balance it with your life, pass all three levels first time and make the most of the charter. My comprehensive Smash the CFA program will help you do exactly that. So if you're interested in helping me build it and getting exclusive access to a studying masterclass, which got me first time passes and 90th percentile scores, exclusive access to me and a community of fellow candidates, discounted study materials with up to $460 worth of saving, and all at a 50% discount for the first 50 students only. There's a link in the description where you can register your interest. Now let's move on to creating a study plan. The curriculum is a beast. There's lots to get through. The exams are tough and you'll be working too. So if you're going to get through it and pass the exams, you need a solid study plan. Now I've done a deep dive on the study plan that got me 90th percentile scores, the links on screen, but here's how you need to think about it. Firstly, how much time do you need? Well, I recommend six months per level, which will give you time to get through the curriculum, absorb, review and then practice questions. Now the general guidance is three to 500 hours per level, but I'd ignore this because not all study hours are equivalent. Quality over quantity is key, which means becoming a more efficient learner. And again, I've done a deep dive on this. The link's on screen, check it out. As a general rule of thumb, if you do one to two hours per day, four to five times a week over six months, you'll be absolutely fine. It's really key to avoid cramming all the hours into one to two days per week because there's a limit on how long you can study effectively for, which is around 90 minutes. After this, there's diminishing returns and your burnout. So generally spreading out your study sessions will mean they're higher quality and less soul destroying. Okay, so how should you approach the curriculum? Here's a few tips. So firstly, do not cram level one, even though you can, you're going to regret it because level two and three assume you understand level content. Well, if you don't, you're going to cry. If you want more advice on how to approach level one specifically, I've done a deep dive, the link's on screen. Always start with the hardest topics, so the likes of quant, fixed income, derivatives, and so on, not ethics, because these take time to absorb, digest. You're going to need to review them at least once or twice more, so you need to give yourself time for that. Also, for more complex concepts, a lot of the learning actually happens away from the desk, i.e. when you're walking, sleeping, and so on. So if you study these early in your study schedule, you'll have plenty of time to absorb and digest. Generally speaking, during your first run, you need to pass through the curriculum at a higher level, 
don't get bogged down in the details if you get stuck on something make a note of it come back to it in the future generally you need to get a lay of the land and then come back and dive deeper this will unlock two things so firstly the mental satisfaction of progress so when you look at your track and see you've already completed 50 to 60 percent of the curriculum that will add additional motivation versus looking at your tracker and seeing that you've only done 10 percent because you've gone super deep on the first topic secondly the curriculum is very interconnected so the missing piece of the puzzle in terms of your understanding might be in another topic later in the curriculum so once you've done it all you'll have a good holistic understanding and as i said during the second review you can come back and go deeper and during that second review for the more complex material i'd recommend watching the full lecture again whereas for things you understood quite well first time around review videos might suffice to enable this pace you need to buy your notes and annotate them and only make notes for the more complex material do not make them all from scratch it wastes tons of time as I mentioned earlier in the video, IFT's notes are amazing for this and you have a 15% discount waiting for you to so check out the description. And finally, when should you do end of chapter questions? Well, there's no right answer for this, but for me personally, I like to do them during the second review. The reason for this is they take time and slow your progress, which means there's an entire side of the curriculum that you haven't even seen yet. And that brings with it mental baggage. And as I said, important context might be in other topics. Before I move on, if you like this kind of content and find it valuable, consider hitting like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see anything else, drop a comment below. Okay, let's conclude this video with mistakes to avoid. There's a few here, but let's start with procrastination, which is the number one thing that kills candidates saying, I'll do it tomorrow. Procrastination leads to increased workload, which leads to cramming, and that makes it very difficult to absorb the information. And all of this leads to stress, which makes the journey even more difficult. If you're serious about being a CFA charter holder, you need to lock in. The reason it's so highly regarded is because of the sacrifice it requires. You need to inspect your motivation and desire. How badly do you want the CFA? Would you rather watch TV, scroll social media, hit the town every weekend, or would you rather increase your job and earning potential? So write down all the reasons you want to do the CFA and keep this handy. Review it regularly, remind yourself of the journey that you're on and remind yourself of what you're capable of achieving and then go all in. But you are human, so make your life easier by removing distractions from your study environment, such as putting your phone in another room. And generally, if you miss one session, that's fine. Just don't miss again. The second mistake to avoid is overloading information and this is related to procrastination and cramming. Trying to do too much in one session is counterproductive. There's a limit to the amount of information you can absorb and the time that you can study for which is around 90 minutes. After this you're into diminishing returns territory. This is why I recommend six months of study one to two hour sessions four to five times a week because it allows you to study one thing at a time with complete focus. It's important that you focus on understanding the concept not memorizing which means employing first principle thinking and this is really important at level two and three so slow down set a schedule identify what you're going to study and go deep don't overload the third one is making your own notes now i touched on this earlier in the video however i made this mistake at level one and it wasted tons of time do not make your own notes from scratch if you do during the first run you'll focus on writing rather than listening to the lecture which then just doubles the amount of time you need so buy your notes annotate them and make your own for more complex material and as mentioned multiple times ift's notes are great for this yada 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 check the description the fourth mistake is the wrong approach to questions there's thousands of practice questions throughout the charter and simply put you're not going to get them all right especially without consulting your notes. I remember when I was doing level one, I would try and do them without consulting my notes. I would get them wrong and then I would feel demoralized. The truth is you need to convert knowledge to application and that takes time and questions are a part of that. So give yourself one to two months to do questions, consult your notes where needed and don't feel demoralized if you get them wrong. It's part of the process. How you perform in the real exam is what matters. A quick note on mocks. Do not do them until the last one to two weeks before the exam. There's a limited number. There are key parts of your preparation. You need to do them under time pressure and without consulting your notes. So only do them when you're ready in that last stretch. Do not waste them. The final mistake is neglecting your health. So I want to conclude this video by emphasizing the importance of maintaining your mental and physical health throughout your study. It's very easy to get caught up in study and work and forget to eat well, train, rest and so on. The truth is, if you're going to pass the CFA, you need to be at your best, which means healthy and energetic. So ensure consistent sleep a nutritious diet and importantly exercise. Walking, which is great for reinforcing learning, hitting the gym, playing sports are all good options. Just move. So that's it for this video. Now, my previous video, which was everything you need to know about the CFA, 
had one thing missing, which was the CFA level two curriculum update, which wasn't published at the time. So I'm appending it to this video if you're interested. I put up a summary on screen. As you can see, it's not particularly material. The main change is in alternative investments within real estate and a couple of tweaks to ethics. So if you like this, then you're going to love these two on the screen. And otherwise, thanks for your time and see you in the next video.